Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about the global e-commerce industry with a special focus on Temu as its parent company, PDD Holdings, is one of my favorite firms in my China coverage. The company has grown rapidly through social media word of mouth and is now extremely popular among consumers with their well-priced products. Given that they are now at the global stage with Amazon, AliExpress, Temu has a lot of potential to actually help grow the industry size because of their unique approach towards customers' shopping experiences. I was asked by the Temu team themselves to share objective analysis on e-commerce and talk about my findings with my viewers. The main differentiating factor about this model is that merchants don't have to bear the burden of various tasks such as marketing, packaging, shipping, and warehousing, or more. Instead, they earn a fixed profit on each product sold, and this profit remains substantial when products are sold in large quantities. So will this model be a win-win? Let's continue to explore. Today's content will be very educational in nature. It's not so much investment focused, but much more so analysis and research focused. While Temu is sponsoring my research efforts, they have allowed me to share my original findings. So thank you to Temu for partnering with me today. For full disclosure, I have bought things from Temu and I do enjoy their products very much. Now, before we get started, if you're interested in getting a copy of today's video research slides, just drop your email below and you'll automatically receive it. Make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on the bell, share the video, and let's begin. So in case you haven't noticed, Temu's shopping platform has been on a meteoric rise in terms of popularity since they launched in September of 2022. Temu has been averaging more than 30 million downloads per month in the second half of 2023. The chart is shown below. That type of growth is remarkable considering that they launched only in fall of 2022. Now, Wall Street firm Morgan Stanley did a recent study on retention time among major e-commerce platforms, and this chart below shows how much time users are spending on the platform, which suggests how effective the websites are at keeping people in scrolling their products. From their analysis below, we can see that Temu, since it launched in fall 2022, has been able to keep users on the website for nearly 13 to 15 minutes per visit. This is a key metric that e-commerce platform companies watch because it may correlate with how much people spend. It's logical that the more time people spend on the website, the more they tend to consider purchasing products. Now let's talk about their unique model which allows them to sell products at prices that are attractive to consumers at significant scale. To do so, we dissect the difference among the pure third-party model, the first-party model, and the fully entrusted model in e-commerce. So we'll dive deeper here. Now the advantages and disadvantages that I'm about to share are purely my opinion. We'll start with the third-party model because that is the one that most consumers are familiar with. Companies such as Amazon, AliExpress, and eBay represent the third-party model, whereas popular retail stores such as Nike, H&M, and Gap uses the first-party model. Temu, on the other hand, uses what we call a fully entrusted model, which we'll talk about afterwards. The third-party model in e-commerce means that the platform is essentially the host for sellers who are independent merchants of the platform itself. So, sellers have the ability to list their products at the prices that they set. In other words, the third-party model acts as a marketplace where the platform can host many third-party sellers' products to interested buyers. The way third-party platforms earn revenue is through listing fees, transaction fees, and ads. Some third-party platforms such as Amazon FBA help with logistics and fulfillment services as well as setup mechanisms such as rating and review systems to maintain consumer trust. Now, the advantage of third-party models is that it allows the platform to provide a lot of selection for products leading to a diverse marketplace. They're also very scalable as the inventory responsibility falls onto the seller and encourages competition to keep product quality high and prices to be competitive. Operational logistics represent a significant aspect in this regard, necessitating comprehensive compliance measures throughout the platform's operations. To illustrate, we can examine how Amazon and AliExpress each implement and navigate these logistical intricacies within their respective models. Amazon's third-party model, which is sometimes called Amazon Marketplace, is the foundation of its e-commerce strategy, where many different merchants can sell their products alongside the company's own branded products. Sellers face a really strong competition from other third-party sellers to ensure that what they offer is distinguished and offered at a fair price. Amazon's strict policies on product quality and customer service 
often results in favor of the consumers who shop on the platform. Strengths of the platform include that Amazon has an established and large customer base with options to use fulfillment by Amazon to streamline logistics. Amazon also provides data, insights, and advertising tools to best help sellers reach their target audience. The drawback is that transaction fees can be quite high and the consumer loyalty typically goes to Amazon, the platform, rather than the third-party sellers themselves. For AliExpress, which also uses the third-party model, it has its own unique strengths and weaknesses. Its strengths include that they have a vast international consumer base and there is also a very diverse product range with millions of products across a variety of categories. AliExpress is also often used as a way to find low price products which could be attractive for consumers looking for deals for small businesses or for inventory to resell. A downside of AliExpress's model is that because the model requires each individual merchant to ship products by themselves, the shipping cost and inventory cost will be factored in to the product cost shouldered by customers. And this lag time means that its appeal may or may not be mass market with the typical consumer who may want products faster. AliExpress also has a potential language barrier on the platform as it is mostly designed with Chinese consumers in mind and that means that the company may be leaving international e-commerce opportunities on the table. For the first party model, it's a business model where the platform sells to you directly from their own inventory. These are direct brands such as Abercrombie & Fitch, Gap, and Nike. Now let's talk about Temu's model, which we'll call the fully entrusted model. Here, merchants leverage the platform's infrastructure, user traffic, and market entry with a low requirement on the merchant's operational skill. All logistics, settlement, and after-sale services are handled by Temu. The main differentiating factor about this model is that they don't have to bear the burden of various tasks such as marketing, packaging, shipping, and warehousing, or more. So let's keep discussing. Diverging from Amazon and other platforms, Temu reduces shipping costs significantly for bulk orders, while simultaneously foregoing commissions and other fees typically associated with such platforms. This reduction in operational expenses empowers Temu's merchants to concentrate exclusively on their products. In the customer's case, they also offer free shipping on most orders and compensate consumers for late deliveries. They also offer 90-day free return for all items, whereas Amazon has 30-day return for most items. So compared to traditional models, this emerging framework prioritizes flexibility, customization, and intelligent decision-making, leading to a significant reduction in waste and logistical inefficiencies. Now, based on my understanding, Temu is able to offer these competitive prices by establishing a direct link between consumers and cost-efficient producers, eliminating middleman fees and allowing purchases at factory wholesale rates. This direct-to-consumer approach removes markups and makes makes the products available at attractive prices. Temu has a direct from factory model that is different from traditional retail because it minimizes the number of times goods are transferred, which translates into substantial cost savings for consumers. We can see from the chart below that this model is extremely popular for almost every age cohort from young folks, middle-aged individuals, and older folks. We can also see from the income distribution chart below that Temu attracts a significant number of consumers who earn under $100,000 USD. A closer inspection of product listings show that if we include the major discount chain Five Below into comparisons with Temu and Amazon, we can see that there are a select number of items from Temu that tend to be cheaper than Five Below and Amazon. And from the table comparison above, we can see that items such as pens, nail sets, curtains, home and kitchen items, phone accessories are all less expensive on Temu. The e-commerce industry has undergone a very big shift in the past few years. Industry incumbents such as Walmart and Best Buy have leveraged their omnipresent channel where they combine both their stores and their online presence to leverage the in-store pickup concept. We can see that while delivery to a person's house is the preferred method, there's also a very big percentage of people who would prefer to pick up their items at the store. Now, the discount retail industry is seeing its landscape potentially expand, as we can see from the industry dynamics below. Temu has reached up to 17% of the entire U.S. discount retailing market share from 0% when it started in Boston in fall of 2022 by growing with word of mouth. Now, the advantage that Temu has is that it is being financed by its parent company, PDD Holdings, which has a total of $21 billion of cash on its balance sheet. So I would estimate that Temu's global marketing spend only accounts for less than 5 to 10% of its parent company's cash position reserves. So Temu's ability to continue financing its marketing efforts are indeed sustainable as PDD Holdings growth in China continues to be robust. 
From their latest quarter, PDD Holdings spent about 3.47 billion USD on operating expenses. So that means the liquidity to finance Temu continues to be strong. The reason for Temu's growing popularity is positive word of mouth, which has led to a virtuous cycle of marketing. Now going forward, Temu is now setting its sights on opening up the potential for US and European sellers to participate on its platform as it expands its merchant list. And broadly speaking, the future of the e-commerce industry may include more social elements and integrate more product video review features so that it almost feels as if you've seen it in person, something that Amazon has been doing in their Amazon Influencer program. It's also possible that AI chatbots will show up more in a typical shopping experience, which may help to guide consumers to navigate what type of product that they're looking for more efficiently. These AI chatbots could potentially be used for upselling and cross-selling. Platforms may also integrate voice search in their sites as well, so that it makes the shopping experience easier. As online is now the preferred destination for many shoppers, 73% of shoppers think that they can get better deals online than they can in physical stores. Because people are more price sensitive due to the cost of living situation in the US, almost 80% of people do price comparisons online. With price being a primary factor for the majority of people, Temu is competing specifically in this area while doing its best to balance price and quality. Since price, product quality, and speed of delivery are the most important factors that influence purchasing decisions, Temu's focus in these areas has allowed them to build a strong reputation. Looking forward, Temu's continued success is likely to expand the e-commerce industry while also helping US consumers have another option to buy well-priced products to help folks manage the cost of living situation. On long time horizons, I'm bullish on the entire e-commerce industry. Any company that figures out how to leverage the power of an e-commerce first party, third party, or fully entrusted model will probably gain market share in their niche. And that will result in more investor dollars. Temu's full hosting platform and ability to offer high quality products at low prices will certainly be one of these companies that enjoys healthy growth while benefiting consumers in the years ahead. A win-win for everyone involved. Give this a video a like if you enjoyed the research, subscribe, join my email list below. Thank you to Temu for sponsoring our research efforts today on the future of e-commerce and for providing everyone with well-priced products to choose from. See you next time.